Yo, what is up, everyone? It is The Beast. Welcome back to the channel, The Beast On. Uh, first of all, before we go any further, before we get into why I'm laying down and uh, all that stuff, if you see this face, the Shayna Punham, as they say in Swahili, uh, if you hear this voice, please subscribe to the channel down there. Subscribe, 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 and share this video with everyone you know. If you see this on Twitter or Facebook, don't heart the post, share the post, retweet the post, do all that. I need your loving. I'm almost there where I can just make YouTube pay for uh, the electricity, which would be good. All right. It's been a while since I've posted a video. Sorry, I just hit that. Um, and it, let me just, I, I want to be transparent. Um, I, uh, as some of you may know or may not know, um, after I was corporately displaced from the radio industry, November of 2019, I was employed for a couple of months. Then I was hired at a wonderful place called Code Ninjas. Um, and I worked there for on and off for eight months. And the pandemic hit and all of these things changed and problems came up and all that stuff. And I left there. And then I didn't know what to do because the job offers were certainly not coming in. So I made a decision because I ultimately know what I want to do in life, and that is to be, um, not only to get back to, to being, you know, a, a talent or a uh, broadcaster or a uh, communicator in some sort of audio visual fashion, but more importantly, I want to be in management. I want to be an executive. I want to either be at the top level of some company or run my own company. Um, it's something that's really important to me um, because I've certainly through my 25 years in media seen the good things and the bad things, and the good way to manage and the bad way to manage uh, throughout my time. So in order to accomplish that, um, you know, not only do I have my background being the assistant program director for the ticket and QAM, but what I, I just needed to get more. Um, so I decided to go back to school and get an MBA with an emphasis on media management in order to put myself in a better position to um, one day accomplish my goals, right? So um, that's what I'm in the midst of. And I am choosing to finish this degree, which is basically a double degree in, in, in MBA and media management um, in one year. It normally, most people do it in two years. I'm do, deciding to do it in one year. I don't want to wait two years. So because of that, I'm taking double the amount of classes and the terms are really short. They're only eight week terms. And so basically you're, you know, what, what would normally be learned in a semester is being learned in much less than a semester. I don't know how many weeks a semester is, but what have you. So um, what I'm basically saying is I've just been inundated with schoolwork. Um, last week was the end of term one. I had a 15 page paper to write um, in my communications in uh, media and culture class, uh, which I got an A on. And I had a final project due in my economics class, which I also got an A on. I finished up my first term in graduate school with two A's, uh, which is something I never did in every at any level of any schooling I've ever been uh, a part of. So I'm really working my ass off to do well in these graduate courses. But the thing about it is because I decided to do this in a condensed fashion. Um, so the, the last term ended on a Saturday, last Saturday. And uh, by the way, I'm recording this on Sunday, um, February, or sorry, sorry, Sunday, March 7th. So Everything was was done on, on the 1st, Saturday the 1st, and then, or Monday was the 1st, Saturday the whatever it was, and then the next semester started, or the next term started on March the 1st. And so, ending one term with a bunch of projects, starting a new term, getting to know the teachers, getting to know the whole thing, new subjects, digging in, has really kicked my ass. So that's why I have not posted much over the last week and a half plus. I apologize for that. I need to get better at time management so that I'm able to balance all of this out. But here I am today, 
And, um, you know, normally a lot of times some of my takes have to do with the sports, but, you know, I don't feel like that today. So I put it out to the Twitter audience, and you can follow me at, at Miami Radio Beast. What should I talk about the YouTube channel? And one of the Lauer Rangers from the Lauer After Hours, which is a Dan Lebetard affiliated podcast, which I was on and hope to be on again. You should go look up those guys. Just type in Lauer, L-O-U-R, After Hours, and you'll find the podcast. It's great. Um, it's kind of like an, uh, an addendum, a side podcast at the Levitard show. You need it. You need it in your life. So go subscribe to those guys. But one of those guys suggested that I do just my top five or ten appetizers, a list. And I decided, all right. But when I started thinking about it, um, I started getting caught up in my own um, neurotic self. Because when you t- when you say appetizers, right, like... Obviously, if you order if you order Chinese food, right, they've got their own kind of appetizers, right? You get the uh, you got to have an egg roll, a well crispy egg roll is good. Don't I don't like the spring roll. The spring roll can go to hell. The egg roll is great. You know, you get maybe you get the chicken wings, you get the barbecued ribs. Oh, love some good Chinese ribs. Maybe you go with the boneless ribs. Maybe you do. Maybe you go with uh, what I fell in love with back in the 80s, the Peking ravioli, a.k.a. the Peking dumpling, a.k.a. the dumpling. Um, I like mine steamed. I don't like a pan fried. It gets too greasy. Um, certainly a poo-poo platter is amazing. Um, you usually get your, your two uh, teriyaki beef sticks. You get your two egg rolls. You get your two ribs, your two chicken wings. You might get your two fantail shrimps. Maybe you're too crispy wontons, but it provides you with a good variety and a plethora of appetizers if it's just you and you, basically. I'll just get a poo-poo platter for myself, and that'll be my dinner. Um, And then, you know, do you consider soup an appetizer? Because if you're at the Chinese restaurant, I mean, I've got to go with either my chicken yakka main soup, my chicken and corn soup. If none of those are available, then I'll get the mixed soup, which is, of course, is egg drop and wonton together. So it's egg drop soup with the wontons in it. Um, but I don't know. It's, it, I guess soup would fall into the appetizers because it comes before the main meal. Um, and, you know, up north in Boston, where I think the Chinese food is a lot better than it is down here, um, we have pork strips that we get. I know I'm a good Jew by getting the pork strips. Uh, we love the pork strips uh, up there in Beantown. My dad, if he's watching, will uh, definitely agree on that. Um, and and you might get some chicken fingers, maybe. But, you know, sometimes you skip out of the chicken fingers if you're going to order the honey garlic chicken or the sweet and sour chicken. Because it's basically the same thing with a sauce on it. Uh, so why get it as an appetizer if you're going to get it on the main meal? But, listen, my grandfather loved getting the chicken fingers, dipping it in his spicy mustard, and then getting the sweet and sour chicken, which was basically the same thing for his dinner. Don't ask. He's a, he, he served in World War II, set in his ways. God bless him. We miss him. Rest in peace, Grandpa. Uh, but that's, you know, that's what he did. Um, so those are Chinese appetizers. But then I, think, I started thinking, okay, well, what about, you know, you go for Italian, right? I mean, you go for Italian... You get your Ma sticks. You gotta get you gotta get mozzarella sticks no matter where you go for Italian. You gotta usually you gotta order the garlic rolls or some sort of cheesy garlic rolls or most places have. Are the, is that an appetizer or is it just like an accompaniment? I don't know. We when we order the garlic rolls, they're listed as an appetizer, but we just kind of eat them with our main meal. I don't know how to go on that. Hit me on the feedback. Um, usually, I like to get a nice pasta fagioli soup. That's an appetizer, obviously. And uh, I think the number one appetizer at the uh, sorry I'm uh, somehow burping up coffee. Uh, the number one appetizer at the uh, at the at the Italian places is the uh, mozzarella caprese salad. I mean, you get me some fresh mozzarella. I don't know why I did that accent. I don't even know what that accent was. And some lovely tomatoes, and you put some vinaigrette on it, and oh, manja, so good. Um, I think that's the number one Italian uh, appetizer, right? So when you think about appetizers, you got to think about every different type of uh, food because, 
you know, I guess if we're talking American, right? If we're just going into a sports bar and you're thinking about appetizers, right? Now, back in the day, back in the day, like way back in the day, you'd have to consider potato skins. Like if you're an eight, if you're a seventies or eighties kid, potato skins was was up there, man. When they when Fridays came out with the potato skins, that was like, man, the cat's meow. Oh, you get like a piece of potato with some cheese and some bacon again the kosher bacon of course the the chives and you dip it in the sour cream and i mean and the cheese and nothing could be better than that but it seems like we've moved away from the potato skins the potato skins are no longer at the top of the appetizer food chain uh the nachos are there nachos are always there but listen i've had this debate and listen i i, I know i've gotten into it I was called out by Big Head Joe Rose for tweeting at Flanagan's about their nachos, but Joe Rose somehow thinks that um, instead of tweeting at a restaurant, I should call up the owner. Um, as if I have Mike Flanagan on speed dial. Um, not all of us can be Joe Rose, um, but then again, not all of us can be a bully. Anyways, so um, we... Uh, so as it relates to the nachos, listen, I love nachos. I love, I mean, I love all food. I mean, just look at, just look at what's going on here. I love all food. But as it relates to the nachos, the nachos need to be prepared in a way where there you've got equal cheese coverage. Okay. See, the best nachos that ever existed were the old school, not new school, not now, but the old school L house chicken nachos. You had a big shissel that would be a uh, mandarin for a uh, kind of a serving plate. Uh, you had a big shissel of, of chips perfectly layered with cheese with the cheese coverage was on. There was cheese on every chip and then you had the chicken on it and then the sour cream and all the fixings. Now, listen, I love me some Flanagan's. I love their ribs. I think they're amazing. I love all the dishes there. Um, I love the Caesar salads. I love the dinner salads. I love everything at Flanagan's. But I will not ever again order the nachos at Flanagan's because they will not layer the cheese. You get this big thing of nachos with, of chips, and you just have cheese on the top. But once you get below that first layer, there is no cheese, okay? Okay. There may be chili or sour cream or something, but there's certainly no cheese. And that is a problem. So if they're not going to uh, if they're not going to put cheese on all of the chips, then I can't do it. In order to have nachos, you have to have proper layering, you have to have proper cheese covering um in order to make it a good nachos now to be honest with you you know who i think does a great nachos is Bo campers i think they do a great i think Bo gets the nachos done right there's proper layers of cheese there's good coverage on the cheese you get all the fixing i think they do it right the alehouse chicken nachos has, has let me down I, I don't think it's as good as it used to be that's sad for me but i think the number one appetizer when it comes to just general american fare are the nachos used to be the potato skins now it's the nachos now some people might say wings but i think we've gotten to the point where wings has become a meal right you just order a bunch of wings from the table get some fries you're good to go it's like a hooter situation um so i don't know if wings is an appetizer anymore to be honest with you and listen you can get your soup i mean i love a great onion soup french onion soup but it's gotta be it's gotta be perfect it's gotta have it's got to be in a nice crock. It's got to have the melted cheese. It's got to have the, the bread in it uh, or, or crouton. It's got to have some sherry in it. Um, it really has to be good. I've had some bad onion soups, uh, but for me, that was a go-to. Um, every once in a while, I like to get a nice New England clam chowder, just to remind me of my Bostonian wicked awesome upbringing. Um, but I don't think that we can, um, at any point, say that uh, there is a better appetizer than the perfectly done nachos. Listen, you can get your ma sticks. You can get anything else on the menu. Um, you know, you, sometimes you, we like to get the broccoli bites or the corn bites or something like that. But you get the perfect nachos, perfectly layered. It doesn't get better. 
All right. There you go. Beast on appetizers. That'll do it for me. Uh, hopefully next time we'll uh, take a look at something else. As for why I'm laying here, it's because this is the position in which I do all of my schoolwork. So I interrupted me doing another chapter of accounting for managers so I could record this video. Therefore, I'm in my laying down position with my Comfy on. And Comfy, will you sponsor the damn channel already? Jeez, come on, get on it. All right, thanks for watching. Appreciate y'all. I'll see you when I see you. Peace.